Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a Bible share entitled Tithing in Ignorance. So I'm going to do like a part one and a part two. The part two is going to be called Rob Peter to Pay Paul. And, and this one is called Tithing in, in Ignorance. And in this one, I'm going to deal with a pastor um, who has a conscience. But in the other one, in the other in the part two, the pastor doesn't have a conscience. No, if it's wrong to pay a church tithe to a church, you don't have access to the senior pastor, but you want him to be your spiritual father. Okay. I want to know if it's wrong to be paying tithe to a church, you don't have access to the senior pastor, but you want him to be your spiritual father. Okay, at the beginning of this, she says spiritual father. Now, I know when people say that in the church, they don't really mean anything bad. You know, they, they're actually quite, you know, they're trying to be respectful, right? I know that. And also there's a cultural thing um, within African culture, within Nigerian culture, where you respect your elders, which you're supposed to do. Okay, so let's gain some edification for that. So let's go deeper into the Bible to see. Um, we, we must always go to the Bible to check to see what it says about these things. So let's go a bit deeper to see what it says in terms of calling no man father in the church. So let's go to First Timothy Timothy 5 and we're going to read from 1 to 4. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father and the younger men as brethren, right? So an elder is supposed to be like a father, right? You're supposed to treat an elder like a father, right? And the younger men as brethren. So they are brothers, right? The elder woman as mother. So if it's, if it's an older woman, then you're supposed to treat her as she is a mother. The younger as sisters. So you're supposed to treat the women the same age as you or younger than you as sisters with all purity. So you're not supposed to be lusting after your sisters, right? Right? That's what it's saying. Three, honor widows that are widows indeed. Four, if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to request their parents for that is good and acceptable before God. OK, so there's an order to all of these things. Right. And it's called respect. Right. So let's go back up to one again. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. So you see him and the way you treat him is the same way you would treat your father and the younger men as brethren. So they are your brothers and the elder women as mothers. So you're supposed to treat them as mothers. That's the respect you're supposed to have. And the younger as sisters with all purity. You're not supposed to be lusting after your sisters. You treat them with dignity and respect. So let's now go to Matthew 23 and we're going to read from 8 to 10. Now, the Pharisees and the scribes were giving Christ a hard time and they were the enemies of Israel. So they were Israelites, but they were en enemies to the nation because they rejected Christ and they wanted to uphold the laws of Moses that they weren't even doing. So they were lying, saying they were doing it and they weren't. And then they what they did is that they propped themselves up as being the head of the church. Right. So they were very high minded. Right. So this is Christ speaking here. So we read in Matthew 23 and we're going to read from... 8 to 10 but but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even christ and all ye are brethren so christ is our master so we're not supposed to be calling any man in the church master because christ is our master and we and everybody is brethren so every, all men are on the same level as brethren right as brothers right brothers and sisters right nine and call no man your father upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven right so you're not supposed to be saying you know my spirit, spiritual father you're not supposed to be saying father this and father that as they do in the catholic church you're not supposed to do that you're not supposed to really say spiritual mother and spiritual father you've you got to be careful with that right and call no man your father upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven so because when you start saying father this and spiritual daddy and daddy this and daddy that and spiritual father this and spiritual daddy this and all the rest of it, you're putting your pastor on the same level as Christ. And that's not that's not acceptable. Right. You know, you're putting him on the same level as Christ and God. So he can now come with false doctrines and you're going to you're going to be OK with it. You're going to OK it. Right. Even though, you know, it's wrong you're still going to okay it, right? So that's the problem. Nine, and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. So you're not supposed to call any pastor, any bishop, any spiritual leader 
your father. So you're not supposed to be saying spiritual father, etc., 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 because it gets in the way of the order. And the order is Christ submits to the Most High, man submits to Christ, and the woman sub submits to the man, and obviously the children submit to the woman. So there is an order in all of this, right? And the order must be maintained. And once you start putting man on the same level as Christ and God, then it now leaves the door open to false doctrine and for people to be hurt and abused, right? That's why a lot of these churches, they have you tithing, they have you paying offerings, right? They say your tithe is over and above your offerings, right? Because you have to do it, right? They say it's it's 10% before tax. They say it's every single increase, every single money that is seen as an increase and you have to pay 10% and you've got to bring it to the church, right? So it opens the door for abuse. So therefore don't do it. So, so although it's a sweet thing to say, right? It's sweet. You know, and it's not, a, it's, you know, it, it's, you don't mean any harm by it. But at the same time, you just have to be careful because then it opens the door to abuse. So there's nothing wrong with respecting your elders. But however, you have to be very, very careful when you when you put someone up on a pedestal, when you put a pastor up on a pedestal as being your spiritual father, it becomes it becomes very, very, very complicated. Right. When you do that, that you are obliged to, and that is the church that you feel you belong to. Of course, it is okay to pay your tithe there, especially if you feel that you know you are receiving something from the pastor, and even though you don't have access to him, but you feel you are obliged to him one way or the other. Yep, it's okay to pay your tithe there. Um, if you need to get him, try to get him, write to him. Maybe you are the one thinking that you don't have access to him. Try to get in touch with him. He's probably going to get in touch back to you. Okay, first thing, the word is tithe. It's T-I-T-H-E. I know he has an accent and I know, you know, he may not be able to pronounce certain things a certain way. I get that. But he keeps saying tight, tight, tight. It's tithe, right? If, if, if you can pronounce something after the T, that would, that would kind of make it a bit more palatable because i've heard um other preachers with the same accent and they pronounce the h kind of right they might say tithe they might say tithe right <laughs> right right but he's saying tight 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 right <laughs> so that is wrong but it's, that's trivial anyway but the most important thing of what he's saying, which is very problematic, is that he's endorsing paying tithing, paying tithe money. We are not supposed to be tithing, right? I've done videos on this. Um, the Bible says that we are supposed to, what, in the old covenant, we were tithing the food from the land of Israel. Because when the Lord brought us to the land of Israel, he brought us to a, a blessed land. The land was blessed. It was the land of milk and honey. It was it was a very, very blessed land. And because it was so blessed, it the food was like no other food. The animals were rare or reared without any issues and without any major problems. It was like paradise to Israel. Okay, so therefore the Most High instituted tithing. But there was, it was it was it was tithing out of respect, but also to take care of the people that didn't have land and the people that needed the food. Right. It was never about money. But all of a sudden, the Christian church now takes something which was Old Testament law, brings it into the New Testament and say you are still supposed to be doing this, which is very odd because they reject pretty much the whole Old Testament but they, that's the one major thing that they bring from the Old Testament into the New Testament. And then in the Israelite church, they take you back to the whole law of Moses. Some of them, they say, oh, well, apart from the sacrificial law, but then they take you back to the whole law of Moses. So it, it's a mess, right? So you jump out of the frying pan, being the Christian church, even though it's lukewarm, and then you jump into the fire. You jump straight into the fire. So you go from a lukewarm church and you jump straight into a Pharisee church. <laughs> Anyhow, let's continue. And I don't, maybe I don't get the question. The person actually said 
he has been trying to meet with the pastor, but due to the protocol involved in meeting him, he has not been able to have access to him. So is it right to then, you don't, you don't uh, decide if you are supposed to pay your tithe to a church just because of that factor alone, if you're able to have access to the senior pastor. If it's a mega church or a big church, the church might be having a system or a structure whereby his subordinates could actually um, meet with you or answer, un answer your questions. But if you don't feel that that church is serving you, and you don't feel that they deserve your tithe. That's another thing. But, you know, there is a doctrine that, has been, that we have all preached, including me, that tithe should go to your church. And which is true, tithe should go to your church. But um, I, I think we, we, it is time to begin to put in some clauses to that. So he's saying all these things about tithing, about tithing going to your church, and he's saying now they're going to they're gonna want to he should they should be putting some clauses to that doctrine that he himself teaches but there's no bible scriptures by the way no bible scriptures whatsoever if you notice this the running theme with these guys they have a lack of bible scriptures lack of edification right so this is what he says let's hear what he has to say the clause i would like to add to that is tight should go to your church only in case you feel and you believe that that church is actually uh, you are obliged to that church, that that church is actually feeding you or is being a blessing to you. So you want to help them, you want to, uh, you want to support them. Then you're, you are putting your, your money where your mouth is. You are, you, are, you, know, you, you are being fed and you are also being grateful by paying your tithe there. That is okay. But it shouldn't be a rule and a law to have everybody just take their money to a local church. I have come to a place now where I have to review that and I have to re review that uh, my position personally. And I think the Bible says, on the other hand, that anything that you do not of faith is a sin. Yeah. So if you uh, are going to that church and you don't believe in it, you don't believe in that church or you don't believe in the pastor or you don't believe in the system that is being run in that church or you don't believe that the money is going to the right places and you don't believe that the money is being used judiciously so you have your doubts if you on that uh, upon those doubts you are still going there to put in the money then you are sinning so in that case i would not advise you to put your money in a church where you don't have your heart with them where your faith is not there where you are not absolutely sure that yes i am comfortable with this i'm happy with what these people are doing with my money and with the leadership and you know i'm happy I'm satisfied. If you are not happy, you are not satisfied. I would rather advise Christians in such cases, especially in you know anywhere in the world, but especially in Africa, to, I would rather advise you as a believer to take your tithe, set it out. I mean, set it apart for God, and go and use it for some God's project, uh, for some God's project that will advance the kingdom of God in a visible way, in a way that you will be able to see it and assess it and evaluate it. So, for example, if you see that, especially... So, Pastor Sunday obviously has a conscience and, you know, he realises that a lot of these prosperity pimp churches are misusing the money, they're misusing the funds, especially in places where there's poverty, where people are poor, they don't have any money. And they've been told that they need to tithe 10% before tax on every single increase. This is evil. You know, it's a very evil, despicable doctrine. And quite frankly, pastors that teach this kind of thing, you're in for a lot, a lot of punishment, a lot of punishment, because it's not biblical. It's an Old Testament law connected to the land of Israel. This is not for now. This is not for now. <laughs> We're in the new contract. The change is, is that you give to meet a need. You give from the Lord puts, lays it upon your spirit to give a certain amount and you give to meet a need, right? Paul said, you do, if you can't afford, don't give. If you can't afford it, don't give, right? But you're giving to meet a need. You're not giving to rich people who already have plenty and who are going to take that money and misuse it. You're going to give to people who really need it, right? And tithing is completely off off the, off the chain i mean that's not even biblical for today 
So let's let's for edification's sake, let's go into the Bible and let's bring out, let's tease out the New Testament giving, right? Because the prosperity pimps, they lie and say that tithing in the Old Testament um, was about money, right? And it wasn't about money. It was it was always about food, right? Nothing else. It was about the animals that was reared reared on the land of Israel and about the food that was grown on it because Israel was blessed. It was a blessed land like no other land, right? So therefore, that's why the, the Most High instituted tithing and it was to take care of those that didn't have land and those that needed uh, assistance, that needed food, that needed help, right? So in the New Testament, it, 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 giving is in the, the new testament given is given to meet a need so let's go to second corinthians 9 and we're going to read from 6 all the way down to 11 we're going to go fast on this one but this i say he which sow it sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he which sow it bountifully shall reap also bountifully so the prosperity pimps would always say it's about when you put your money in you get more money back right and that's not necessarily talking about that, right? Yeah, it, 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 it's probably talking about money, but it's not necessarily t saying you're going to get money back, right? <laughs> because <laughs> the riches really is about being rich in the spirit, right? It's not about monetarial, monetarily enrichment. I mean, yeah, that too. But it, it's, the, the Most High is not guaranteeing you any riches financially here in in this particular world right because it says that you should be um content with what you have right so so it's not saying you give a little or you give you give a lot and you get a lot back right so it's not saying that right in terms of finances in terms of money right seven every man according as his purpose in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, but God love it, a cheerful giver. So that's talking about money, right? So you must purpose it in your heart, what you want to give and give from the heart, right? And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work, right? So when you'll give it, it the, the seed really is is the intention behind the giving right because the bible says he love it a cheerful giver right so you intent in your heart so you that that seed is already sown in your heart and then you give from that right uh eight and and, and god okay and god is able to make all grace abound towards you right so grace means grace right grace just means uh, when the Lord is, is is showing himself to you, right? When the Lord is uh, opening his truth to you, right? When he's having a relationship with you, right? And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work, right? So it's the good work, as we know, is being obedient and is, is is exercising the fruits of the Holy Spirit, but is also doing the good works of Christ, right? That Christ has laid down for us. Nine, as it is written, he hath dispensed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever, right? So once you're given, you know, to meet a need, then your righteousness remaineth forever because you're giving, you should never, it's a sin to give a rich man money, right? So if, you, if you're in one of them, uh, poxy churches right and the past is is stinking rich and then you're giving him a ton of money every week i mean that's just wickedness right you shouldn't do that right he's a multi-millionaire right and he's worth tens of millions you know as his personal wealth and you're still giving him a ton of money every week that's that's evil you shouldn't be doing that right um let's read 10 now he that ministers seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness right so let's read 10 again now he that ministers seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness right being enriched in everything to do all bountifulness which cause it through us thanksgiving to god right so 
the rewards that you get from giving is is mainly righteousness right you get it you get the fruits of your righteousness so you do a righteous act and out of a righteous act um you are now rewarded for that right it says here let's read 10 again now he that ministered seed to the sower both Minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So, so once you are sowing seeds, you know, once you are helping the poor, you know, you're spending time with the poor, you're, you know, you, you're just, you're being a brother and a sister. You're being sympathetic to the poor of your own people, right? Then the Lord will, will, the Lord will take care of you. That's what the scripture is saying. Yeah. And it, it's not it's not saying not necessarily saying if you give a whole load of money, you'll get a whole load more back. That's not really what the scriptures is about. It's about being rich in the spirit always. And it's about increasing your righteousness in the way how you treat your brother and sister in worship of the most high. OK, so just to recap, um, it says that if you once you give monetarily, you will get all the blessings that the Lord has to give to you back in return. Right. So that could be monetarily. It could be um, it could whatever it is. It could be righteousness. But ultimately, it's about being rich in the spirit. Right. Because the Bible says he that ministered seed to the sower. Right. Which is the most high right? Both minister bread for your food, right? So he will give you food to eat, right? Literally food, multiply your seeds sown. So he's going to multiply the money that you give and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So therefore you become rich in spirit, in righteousness, in the fruits of your righteousness, right? Being enriched in everything. So, so you being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which cause it through us thanksgiving to God. So whatever blessings the Most High has for you, he will give it to you. So it's not necessarily monetarily blessings, you know, because the Bible says, talks about being rich in the spirit, right? More than just being wealthy. You know, obviously the Lord can bless you with plenty, but it's not necessarily that's just one of the blessings. Right. And but most importantly is is increasing the fruits of your righteousness by being rich in the spirit. In Africa, everybody is bringing tithes and offering to churches. But on the other hand, they have so many poor people all around them. But the Bible says God cares for the poor. The Bible can encourage you. I, will, so I think instead of giving those money to the churches where the money is being used in a way that you don't even know, you, can, you, are, not, you are not accountable for, to or whatever, I think the money it will be much more you know, fear to spend that money upon the, I mean, on the poor people that are all around you anyway. And that's number one. Number two, I think the Bible also cares for the widows. The Bible cares for the orphans. The Bible cares for the strangers. I think all those people that God, you know, that is the true religion. And I think that using of tithe in such a way is justified. That's what my belief would be today. That tithe should not only be to a church, especially a church where you don't believe in, a church that you don't have trust in, or you, that has not convinced you that they are using the money judiciously. I think every believer should be encouraged to take their money and go and spend on, the most important thing is that you are using it for God. You are using, go and spend them on God's project. Go and spend them on the environment, on the, on advancing the kingdom of God for your life. For you. I do believe that this brother has a conscience and that's why he's saying those things because you could see the poverty all around you and, and these wicked churches, they would see the poverty all around them, but they would still take people's tithe money and then they would take it and spend it on television, right? So that they can get more people coming into the church to give even more tithe money. And then what happens when the tithe money comes in? It goes to the pastor's salary, right? It goes to the pastor's salary or whatever the pastor wants in the church. It doesn't go back to the poor. New Testament giving is that it goes to the poor to meet 
a need. If you have plenty, it gets moved from your hands into people that have need of it. People need to pay their rent. People need to pay for food. People need to pay their utility bills. People need to pay taxes. People are sick and they need to pay for health care. I mean, if you're in a country where you have to pay for, for your insu health insurance, I mean, all, all of that stuff. Right. People have obviously have bills to pay. So when you when you say this blanket thing to all your parishioners and you say, bring all your tithes and offerings and, and you say things like your tithe is what you should be doing. So that doesn't count as an offering and it's 10 percent before tax. And then you say your offering is over and above your tithe. I mean, that's wicked. That is not only wicked, but greedy. For example, some of my people. Uh, in Ukraine here, where you know millionaires don't like to pay tight. I don't know if you know about that. So some pastors who are dreaming of having millionaires in their church, in their churches, uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but millionaires don't normally like to pay tight. They can pay some things, and it could be a big amount of money in your own eyes, but it might not be tight. But it might not be up to their tight. So anyway, but maybe in Africa, millionaires pay tight because they fear God in Africa, thank God. But in Europe here. Yeah, they don't want to pay tight. And so I have a big millionaire, he's a multi-millionaire in my church at, 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 at the time. And this man, mm, he would not, not just him, all the millionaires, they want to see where the money will go. They want to see how you will spend the money. So we came up with an idea and said, okay, I don't want to, I said, I have a burden to feed the poor. And I don't want to live in a city where people go to bed hungry. So he said I should come up with the project, with the project and the analysis and the proof and, you know, everything. So I came up with the figures and all that. And then he was paying 10,000 US dollars, his own tight, which means he was making his own 10,000 or no, 100,000 dollars and 10% of it mm -hmm. between 10. Then he started with 10,000. Then he went to 200,000, I mean, 20,000, 25,000, 50,000 a month paying to feed and we were feeding up to 2,000 people a day every day and this was man was but he would never give one dollar to me onto the church he set up he brought his administrator and his own accountant and he brought he sort of brought us his own staff and to be managing that feeding the no we the feeding area which is being managed by the church but the financial area is being managed by, by his own people, by his own people. And and this is New Testament giving. That's he's actually describing a, 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 a rich man, right? Which which had a bit of sense, you know, about him, right? And he realized, oh, hang on, I'm rich, you know. I can't if I'm giving you ten percent every month or every week, it means that you're going to be, you know, you're going to be a millionaire in no time. I'm not going to give you like millions of my money so that you can spend it and do whatever you want to do with it. I'm going to give it to the people because obviously he doesn't trust the church because he knows what these churches do. As soon as the money starts rolling in, the pastor gets ideas to do all sorts of stupid things with the money. Meanwhile, the people that actually really need it are not getting it. Right. And that's the problem. Right. And tithing is unscriptural anyway. It's not biblical for today's church, right? <laughs> and the only reason why they took it out of the Old Testament is because they are moved by money. Money is their God, right? And they're in it for the money, <laughs> okay? Period, end of. And we say, okay, why don't you... No, not, I'm not actually from Nigeria. I'm from one of the African countries. I said, yeah, they need, I know it needed money. He needed money to advance the kingdom of God. And one of the things he wanted to do is to start a project of distributing messages, books. Mm -hmm. So, and he doesn't have money to do that. And he still wants to give me tight money. I said, is it not, you want to do God work, God's work. You want to promote, you know, print books and, and you are looking for money. And you, you are looking for money and you still want to be giving me money. I said, why don't you d direct every month <laughs> the money you wanted to be giving me as tight? Why don't you use it for advance the kingdom? Kingdom is more important than me. Okay. The thing you want to do to spread the kingdom of God, the word of God everywhere, is more important than me. Although I obviously disagree with tithing in the church, in any church, um, I, I completely disagree. But I, I have to admit that this pastor is refreshing because he seems to have a conscience, although he still pushes tithing, but he does seem to have a conscience. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I hope you were edified. Shalom.